Are you like me and you're spending more than 50% of your day in video conferencing calls like Google Meets and Zooms? Then this video is perfect for you because I will show you a few of my productivity tips and tricks that make my life so much easier and they make my Google Meets way more fun. All of the tips that I'm showing you are free to use, easy to implement, and I use the last one literally every single day. Let's get right to it. You can use Google Meets for free by going to meet.google.com. You can add Google Meets to your calendar meetings by just clicking add to calendar meeting and it gives you up to one hour for free. If you join a new meeting, you can copy this link and share that with anyone. And we're actually gonna do that. Let's start a new meeting and I will join it with one of my other accounts. All right, I just joined the meeting myself and uh, this is the other person in the meeting. The first thing that I always do with any of my meetings is to add my note taker to the call. I do this with Fathom and I'll share more about why I use Fathom for almost every single call. You can add Fathom by clicking on record this call using Fathom and it will add the note taker on the bottom right corner. I'm going to accept this and from now on, I have a note taker in my call. I'll show you exactly how to use this note taker effectively at the end of this video. And this note taker is free and awesome to use. All right, now that we have everyone in the call, the first thing that I'm gonna show you exactly is how to share your screen effectively. Not everyone knows these tricks, but there are three ways to share your screen. The first one is you can share a tab. The second one is you can share a window. And the third one is you can share the entire screen. So when would you wanna share a tab? You wanna share a tab if you wanna share something with sound. The tab is the only thing that that lets you share your sound in a tab. You would wanna share a window if you wanna share a single application, but wanna switch between tabs. And lastly, you wanna share your entire screen when you wanna switch between different applications. However, be careful that you don't have anything open that you don't want anyone to see because this is where embarrassing things can happen. You can simply click on sharing the tab and it will start screen sharing the video and you can see that happening here in the left side. I'm gonna cancel the screen share by clicking on the bottom thing and click stop presenting. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to share a tab. I have a Google Meet presentation ready about how to make presentations. So right now we can see here that this is the example presentation that I've opened. It is showcased by this little rectangle up there, but we can also go back to this presentation and have a whole presentation while seeing everyone in the call on the right hand side. A neat little thing about this is you can click on this thing and scroll through the presentation and present the presentation while you see everyone in the call. You can go from slide one to slide two, slide three, and you can even showcase your cursor. You can do that by holding down your mouse button and dragging it around. This allows you to point at different things in a presentation. For example, I can showcase the thing on the left, but I can also showcase the thing on the right. You should try it out. It's pretty neat. Last thing to consider, obviously, is to like and subscribe if you like this. Little plug for me, but let's get back right to it. I'm going to stop sharing this presentation right here and I'm going to showcase tip number three and that is how to enable live captioning. A neat thing about this is if you're having trouble understanding someone in a presentation you can click on turn on captions and it will live caption your call if someone is speaking. So I'm going to unmute myself and it will caption it live as I am talking and it will even showcase who is speaking. So this is super helpful if you can understand any of the people in your call. I'm gonna turn this off for now and I will showcase the fourth tip for you today. And this tip has to do with shortcuts. If you click command and forward slash, which is the one I clicked here, you can see all of the different keyboard shortcuts that are possible with Google Meet. What I often use is command E to turn on and off my camera in different situations or to mute myself, I click command D. As you can see here in the bottom left, it unmutes and mutes myself as I am clicking command D. Other things that are pretty neat, control, command, and P to open what people are in the call, close the people. You can open the chat with control, command, C. And the other ones here are pretty neat as well. You should try it out. Another super useful tip you just need to set up once is to set up your resolution by clicking on settings, going to video, and then selecting the maximum high definition setting. You are off to the races and can be sure that your video screen quality is the best possible. However, when I'm traveling and I don't have good Wi-Fi, I like to turn this down so that my video quality is stable and I don't get cut off. Another tip that you just need to set up once and then you can forget it is by clicking on settings and you can go to audio and click push to talk. So once you enable this, you can click spacebar and you can push to talk. And once you click spacebar off, you are muted again. This is super useful if you are in meetings with a lot of people where you're usually muted and you just have to say things once or twice. This is 
is super helpful. I'm gonna turn my camera back on again and show you the next tip that will uplevel your Google Meet game. You can look so much better in all of your Google Meets by simply creating a better lighting and a better atmosphere with your computer. I have a light here set up next to me to give me a nice soft side lighting. Without the light, I would look like this. With the light, I look much better. And then the last thing that you can do is you can click on your computer in the top right here and you can select studio lighting. Without the studio lighting, the whole room is this has the same amount of brightness, but with the studio light, you have this nice glow on you and you can even select a portrait mode filter. Another way to do this portrait mode filter, as we can see here in the bottom right, is by clicking on video settings and clicking on video effects and then selecting a blur background. In my opinion, this blur background is not as good as the original one, so I'm gonna turn it off again, but sometimes I use a background, a virtual background to make myself look like I'm in office when there's people walking behind me. I'm gonna turn this back off again and Last thing to note is that you can stack filters here. You can just click on remove all and you're back to the normal effects. All right, these tips were also all great, but the one that I promised you earlier that saves me the most time is using the AI note taker called Fathom AI that is showcased in my left hand call right here. I will showcase exactly how I use this note taker by ending this call and it will finish all of my meeting notes for me in just a second. So I'm gonna click leave this call and I'm gonna click view recording. Now it's gonna create the recording that I can share with my colleagues. So it recorded the whole call and it also summarizes exactly the meeting notes for me. This is exactly how Fathom works. Here you can play the whole video back and it shows you the video and exactly what people say in the transcript right here. But the real power here is in the summary. You can click on what kind of summary you would like. I usually go with chronological or general summary. But the chronological summary, it just summarizes, as you can see here, each of the three minute chunks, it shows you exactly what we talked about and where. The neat thing here is if I wanna share something with that, I can click on it and it will bring me right to the most important part where the thing that we spoke about is. I can also create action items from this if I am on the pro plan, but I'm currently not using this. I'm mainly using this for summary meetings and for transcripts. You can analyze your own meeting transcripts by clicking on copy transcript and then going to chat GPT. I'm gonna copy my whole meeting scrum transcript in there. I've created a meeting productivity guide. You can find that in the description. And I've also created this special prompt that helps me analyze my meeting notes. So I'm gonna go back to ChatGPT and I'm gonna paste that all in here. This custom prompt will give me all of the action items from this call. So this particular prompt, it will take your transcript and it will create a follow-up email and it breaks down detailed tasks and will ask teammates to do certain things. So after I've copied that in here with my transcripts, I'm gonna select, I prefer this response and the email is pretty good. It's like, dear team, thank you for attending the meeting on October 11th. I appreciate everyone's uh, input and participation. Uh, key discussion points are mode demonstrator live captioning in the meetings. I reviewed helpful shortcuts in Google Meet. There's some action items. There were no action items discussed so this is taken out and then there's some additional notes on the things that we just discussed in this very call how cool is that all of these things can be done natively if you get fathom pro but as i just showed you with the right prompts you can also do it yourself the last trick that i want to share with you with google meets is this little button on the bottom right which says activities i highly recommend you check it out you can add different apps to your google meets like a mirror board lucid sparks uh, shards uh, figma you can create breakout rooms and live streams polls and record your meetings but for this you need to have google premium which comes with a google workspace i've been using fathom.video for over a year now and they've been saving me so much time so i just wanted to be transparent that they reached out to me to include them in this video and the nicest thing about them is that they're completely free to use and their basic functionality is super helpful for pretty much 90 percent of my needs i hope you found this video helpful check out my whole meeting productivity guide and let me know in the comments which of these tips was your favorite peace out